Hey everyone, welcome back to Pages and Pores. My name is Robert and this is take two for this video. Uh, if there was ever a clearer sign that I need to upgrade my phone, it was tonight. I still film my videos on an iPhone 10. I know, it's embarrassing. And Apple sent me a message a week or two ago saying that they weren't even going to support the 10 any longer other than for security updates so it's time to upgrade and then tonight i filmed my little video here it wasn't that long probably six seven eight minutes and i go to look at the screen and it hasn't saved anything because it says my storage is full i have a tiny tiny storage and so i have erased my music and i hope there's enough space now to store this video Looks like I'm gonna have to upgrade and get the new iPhone 15 Pro and get the nice camera, but I hate like heck to spend a thousand dollars on an iPhone. So it's either that or switch to one of the really expensive unlimited services where they give you the phone, but then they make it back on the outrageous fees they charge you on the phone. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet, but it, it's it's time to make a change. I'm only five or six you know models behind. Anyway. One of the things that I mentioned in this video that unfortunately didn't get made um, is that my channel, as you know, if you followed me for any time at all, has gone through some changes. I took a hiatus for a while because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And I was also getting very involved in whiskey. And so when I came back, I rebranded from Barter Hordes to Pages and Pours. Pages and Pours represent the two things that I spend most of my time thinking about, and that's books and whiskey. And so, um, I, actually, football is the third one, but I didn't, I didn't want to put that into the channel. Um, and so I rebranded. I am trying very hard to stick to a rigid schedule of two videos per week. My Monday video is going to be about whiskey. My Friday video is going to be about books. And I'm always going to make the thumbnail as clearly indicative as I can uh, as to the content of that particular video. So when you see whiskey bottles on the thumbnail, it's a whiskey video. If you see books on the thumbnail, it's a book video. So you can choose accordingly if you like just one or the other. If you're one of those great people who like both, awesome, come see me twice a week. Um, so that's what's going on. Uh, I decided to do something a little bit different tonight. I've been doing some bourbon battles on my whiskey videos recently, but I, I haven't had any Irish whiskey in a little while. And I wanted to try something a little bit different. I have not been the biggest fan of Irish whiskey because I was drinking some Irish whiskeys that all tasted basically the same to me. They were all low proof. They were all you know, a little bit of apple, a little bit of pear, and not much else. Um, I think Irish whiskey has a little bit of a problem in that the Middleton Distillery makes so many of the brands of Irish whiskey that a lot of theirs do tend to, to taste a little bit the same to me. But that's because I wasn't tasting anything with a little bit higher proof. And then I discovered, I like the Red Breast 12. That's probably one of my two favorites of the lower proof Irish whiskeys. But I found a bottle of the Red Breast 12 cask strength and picked it up, even though it was a little bit expensive. I thought, this would be the real test. And I really liked it. It, it. it told me there was a whole world of Irish whiskey out there that I was not accessing. And then a couple of months ago in Nashville, I picked up a bottle of West Cork Barrel Proof Irish whiskey. I'd never had anything from West Cork before. Uh, I just opened this a few minutes ago tonight. So this is a brand new fresh bottle crack. I've had this one for a little while. The bottle's probably a third to a half way finished. And so I just thought I would drink these two side by side and see if there's any major differences. Um, my little fact sheet here, uh, this of course, the, the Red Breast 12 cast strength is at least 12 years old. It is, it is a traditional Irish pot steel whiskey. It is 58.1% ABV. And even though I saw someplace online listing its retail price at $70, I've never seen it for $70. I usually see it between 90 and 100. And in fact, I think I paid 100 for this bottle. Um, it, it is matured, I believe, in ex-bourbon barrels, or it just says traditional oak barrels, but that my guess is that usually means uh, ex-bourbon barrels. The West Cork Irish whiskey is, 62%, so it's a little bit higher ABV. 
It's only half the price of the red breast though. It's 40 to $50. I think I paid about $44 for this one in Nashville when I was visiting. Um, and I've never had any of the other West Cork bottles. I saw the cast strength, I thought we're just gonna go right to the top. It is a blend of both grain and malt whiskeys, which is a little different from the traditional Irish pot still, which is, I believe, all malt whiskey. Um, and it is probably, there's no age statement on this one. I'm guessing it's considerably younger than the 12 years of the red breast. All right, I've already tasted these, so I know what to expect. I've already done this video, and so I can go through this part relatively quickly. But when I, when I test the aromas on the red breast, it is slightly traditional. It's like the, the regular Red Breast 12, but everything's amplified by a factor of four or five. I get the usual uh, fruits. On uh, this one, you even get some darker fruits. Usually when I taste Irish whiskey, I get apples and pears, but on this one, you can even get some figs, some raisins, some dark fruits. But there's also a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of caramel. And then when you taste it, There's some spiciness that goes to the sides of my tongue. Uh, it's obviously a higher proof whiskey because it immediately coats my whole mouth and my mouth starts to water, which happens with barrel strength whiskeys for me. It's very nice. For 58% for ABV, it doesn't drink that hot at all. It's very smooth, very approachable, very nice flavors. On the West Cork, I get a little bit of that grain mixture between the, the, the grain whiskey and the malt whiskey. When I, when I test the aromas, I do get a little bit of the green apple. When I tasted this just a few minutes ago, it was quite a bit more aggressive than the red breast, even though it's only a few percentage points higher on the alcohol volume. It's got a very nice flavor. It's a little bit hotter. I get a little bit of dark chocolate, which I don't get in a lot of whiskeys, but I get a little bit of dark chocolate. There's almost a leather tasting note which is kind of weird for me on an Irish whiskey. I do get a little bit of honey, a little bit of, uh, of caramel and oak, but there's a, a definitely a peppery spice to this. So I don't feel like I have to pick a winner. Um, I like the Red Breast 12 a great deal, but at $100 a bottle, it's pricey. Um, I like the West Cork, maybe just a little bit less than the Red Breast because it is a little bit more aggressive. It is a little bit more spiky on my tongue. Um, but at $40 to $50, this is a much better value than the Red Breast. I think it's worth trying both and see which one fits your palate the best because I do think you're going to find very different profiles on these. This is, the West Cork is possibly one of the more unique ones I have tried, and I've not tried the whole gamut of Irish whiskeys. I'm relatively inexperienced with Irish whiskeys. Um, but I really do like it for 40 to $50. That's an interesting high proof pour. Uh, you'd want to be careful with this one at 62%. A couple of pours of this and, and your night better be done. <laughs> All right, everybody. Sorry about having to remake this, although you didn't witness the first one, so I don't know why I'm apologizing, but um, I'm glad I was able to catch it before I went to editing and had to start from scratch. Uh, but I'll get this up, and I will see you again on Friday with a book video. And, oh, there was one more thing I did mention to you, and I don't, I don't know the answer to this. If any of you are YouTube geniuses, maybe you can explain it. Since I rebranded, and since I started adding whiskey videos, I've lost a lot of subscribers and I don't get nearly as many views as I did a year or two ago. I accepted that when I rebranded. It hurts, but I accepted it. My average video in the first day gets anywhere from 60 to 80 views. For some reason, Friday's video, uh, which was my TBR announcement for next year's classic book reads, 
got 600 views the first day. Um, and it got more thumbs up than I usually get views on a video. And I don't know why. I didn't see anybody shouting at my channel that sent a bunch of traffic to my channel. Maybe there was somebody and I missed it, but I didn't find it. It looked like most of the traffic was coming from people's home pages, which means something about YouTube's algorithm picked up on that particular video out of all my videos and boosted it and I don't know why. The only thing I can see looking back now, I forgot to turn on the monetization. Don't get me wrong, I make no money on my videos. I think in the five, six years I've had a channel, YouTube has sent me a check for $100 maybe twice. But I have the monetization turned on because I was trying to prevent YouTube from putting those aggravating mid-roll advertisements in my videos. But since I didn't put it on this video, Maybe that's why it suddenly took off in their algorithm. So for tonight's video, I'm not turning on the monetization on that one either. And if it goes right back to the normal 60 to 80 visits or views, I have no explanation. <laughs> but I'm just trying to figure out what the game is all about. It doesn't make any difference to me. It's not a business for me. I'm not making any money off this channel. I'm not intending to make any money off this channel. But I do like it when more people see my videos. That doesn't make me feel better. So anyway, if you know why it might have happened last time, and maybe this time, maybe not this time, let me know in the comments below. If you've tried these whiskeys, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you again on Friday with a book video. Until then, cheers everybody with my almost empty glass.